I came across uh, Jacques Vitriolysis just two years ago at the ESCS meeting in Amsterdam. I was skeptical, uh, honestly, at the beginning, but uh, I needed a Jacques laser anyway. And uh, I was quite happy by the concept that uh, the Ulu illumination beam is coaxial to the five other beams, the two observation beams, the two targeting beams and the treatment beam. The, the visibility, even for Jack capsulotity, is so much better than what I was used to so far and that made me to, to go to choose this laser. I've started to do Jack capsulotomies at the beginning uh, and I was so pleased uh, how good the results were and how good the visibility of the pathology and the structures the IOL was. This made me optimistic and uh, so while doing Jack capsulotomies I went deeper into the into the vitreous and uh, I did globules and strings of vitreous behind the IOL and I could just melt them away. I was so surprised nothing happens, no macular edema and I dared to go even deeper into the vitreous did my first uh, vice rings and had tremendous successes and I have so many uh, patients right now that I have a waiting list of uh, four months uh, and uh, try to reorganize the practice. You have a burst effect which you use uh, to, to break the, the capsule. You are used to that ever since you have been a junior in training. Uh, this is the first procedure you get to do and it has a second effect, you can vaporize matter with it, transform it to gas. If you bundle the, the energy to, to a tiny point, you have such a, um, a high range of power that you create ions and electrons and uh, this is called a plasma. And uh, by this way you transform solid matter into gas. That is the key of uh, laser materializes, you vaporize matter into gas. If you wouldn't vaporize, uh, you wouldn't make patients happy. You would just cut uh, the matter into pieces. It is vaporized, transformed into gas, and gas is just absorbed uh, by the eye within, uh, within a day's time. You all know this from past planar vitrectomies or gas bubbles you leave in the eye be uh, after a cataract operation. You create gas bubbles and funny enough those gas bubbles they are they are uprising in the eye and what patients tell you something is dropping down. Uh, that is what patients uh, see during the treatment. Uh, I have for my work a classification of uh, five different floaters. Floaters originating from the retina or percular. Floaters originating from a YAC capsulotomy where you create floaters yourself if, if you're not careful and like with the can opener technique. Many of my patients coming to my floater clinic, uh, they come with floaters uh, after a YAC capsulotomy which is not professionally done. Then we have floaters originating from the outer uh, membrane of the vitreous after a posterior vitreous detachment, uh, yeah, you all know the vice ring that's part of this group. And if we're looking at the vitreous itself inside, uh, uh, there is with young patients a zone of uh, vitreous, I call that type 2, which is right behind the retina in a distance of 3 millimeters. These are the difficult patients. Uh, clouds and globules and strings, you can wonderfully melt that down if, it's not, uh, if there are not too many. And furthermore, astrotylosis, uh, there, there is no way to do that. Uh, you have to do a posterior vitrectomy. But uh, again, easy are the vice rings. You have a success rate of 95%. Uh, and uh, the stromal floaters are fine as well. It's a wonderful procedure for them to avoid uh, a vitrectomy. And it's between four to eight millijoules, depending on the type of floater. Stromal floaters are very soft. Uh, they are in the middle of the vitreous. Uh, the, you can do them with four to five millijoules. But when you go deeper into the eye, like high mobile guys, which are the axial, the axial lengths are 28 millimeter, and if those, uh, if you after a vice ring, they can be sometimes, uh, sometimes they have a very high fibrinous. Uh, Content, then you need higher energies up to 9 to 10 millijoules. But I kind of titrate that. I see during the treatment how much energy is necessary to, to achieve an optical breakdown and the formation of plasma and, uh, and the body.